Hello, welcome back. <laughs> not weird. My name's Jack, this is Jack Lee Golf. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, please make sure you hit that like button down below because basically that means that these videos will get seen by more people if you are liking them. Today we're going to talk simple ideas because I've been releasing a lot of club testing videos recently and a few of you have been commenting saying that you're just not quite up to date, up to speed with some of the jargon that I'm using. So I'm gonna break it down for you. Let's get into it. So as you can see on screen there, I've pulled up an image of a shot that I hit with a driver in a previous golf test. It was quite a nice drive, that's why I've picked it. One gent who I teach, who is an avid watcher of the channel, Mr. Alex Beresford, said to me, you, you do these club reviews and then you talk about this number stuff and I ain't got a clue what it means. So I'm gonna break down some of the main data parameters that I speak about during those reviews. So, first up, we've got carry distance. So carry distance is how far the ball travels in the air, simple. Next one, we've got roll. So as soon as it hits the ground, how far does it travel? And then we come to total distance, which is both of those combined. Obviously, uh, if you have firmer ground conditions, you're going to get more roll, which will equate to more total distance. If you have soft ground conditions, you'll obviously get less roll, which equates to less driver distance. The next parameter we're going to look at is lateral. So this is from left to right, how far you're missing the center line of the target. So you can almost think of the center line as being the middle of a fairway or an actual target. On our driving range, the way it works with flight scope is we have got a center line of the driving range. There's a yellow flag, a red flag and a tree in the distance all straight behind each other one behind another and that is our center line so it's very easy to tell when you're left right how much you're missing by one thing the flight scope does extremely well though is give you that exact data so on this drive as you can see it was pretty straight ever so slightly left of that center line one yard left so that is lateral if if you are someone that's got an uncontrollable slice and you see excessive curves to the right you might be 20 25 30 even 40 yards right of that center line so if that is the case then make sure you're getting booked in for those lessons because i'd love to help you with that kind of stuff next up is the ball speed so that is how fast that golf ball is coming off the club at that moment of impact more chance of having a greater ball speed if you're hitting the center of that golf club that's where the most ball speed speed is generated as soon as you're moving that strike around the face so in the heel region high low toe region you're going to be losing ball speed and now obviously you can't generate extremely high ball speed without extremely high club head speed club head speed is how quick you're swinging that club around your body and this number here is measured right at the moment of impact so on this drive it was 106 mile an hour so if you deliver a lot of speed and you've got a very centered strike there's a good chance that you're going to hit that golf ball absolutely miles if if you swing it slow and you don't hit it out the middle, there's a good chance it's going to go nowhere and your friends are going to laugh at you and then you're going to get embarrassed and then you're going to have to go and get some golf lessons and I'm going to have to sort you out, aren't I? Smash factor is an interesting one. You can think of smash factor as being efficiency. So the calculation is your ball speed divided by your club head speed and it will give you a number anywhere in between the realms of 1 to 1.5, 1.6. On this instance, my smash factor was 1.51, that means I've got very, very good efficiency. So what's that telling me is I've got good speed, but I'm hitting the center of that golf club. As soon as you see your smash factor drop off, uh, especially with the driver into the realms of 1.2s, 1.3s, then we know it might be a bit of a problem that we've got with strike and it's losing you a bit of distance. So that smash factor, it's all about efficiency. Obviously, good smash factor, you're going to hit it further. Bad smash factor, you're not reaching your potential when it comes to distance. Oh, just a couple of things as well when it comes to smash factor. So we're looking at like 1.5 being an ideal for the driver. We're looking at, due to lofts and stuff like that, 1.4 being a real good number for iron shots, like mid irons and stuff like that. And then when it comes to wedges, it's more like down towards the 1.3s. Right, last but not least, we're looking at spin rate. So spin rates are something that's highly scrutinized by a lot of people, and rightfully so, really. So on this instance, we saw uh, this driver spun at 2,620 revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute is what spin is measured in when we come to using the flight scope and other launch monitors. Obviously, depending on each shot, there is an optimum. So there is an optimum spin for every shot when it comes to distance. However, when you look at more specialized shots, so when you come around the green chipping and you want a little bit more spin, having more loft can help you with that. Ideally, when we're thinking about optimums again, so when it comes to me hitting a driver as far as I can, it's all about getting that spin level, that spin number around the 2000 mark. 
this being 2,600 is still a very appropriate spin for me hitting driver and hitting it relatively far. What we do notice with a lot of people is that they're either spinning it too low or they're spinning it too high. When we're thinking about spinning the golf ball too low, which is the more frequent case for a lot of people, when you think about hitting into a green, if that green is firm and you've not got enough spin, you're not going to keep that ball on that green. We see that quite often with people that have got incorrectly fitted golf clubs. So a big thing that I always harp on about, and it does get quite boring, make sure you're coming down and getting your clubs custom fit. We do that here at Kingswood. All the information is in the description below. Best place to come and get fitted. I'm not just saying that because I work here. I mean it. And similarly, if you spin it too high, if your spin numbers are too high with certain clubs, could also be a custom fitting error that's been made in the past so yeah make sure you're coming to see us obviously if you've still got any questions on this golf ball data that we've, we're trying to simplify today make sure you leave your comments in the section below i'd love to help you out any queries that you've got make sure you, you question them in the comment section below the comments have been brilliant recently um, so thanks ever so much for your continued support on the channel now today we spoke about golf ball data there's a separate total data parameter set when it comes to club head data so if you'd like me to get into more depth with club head data make sure you're leaving a like on this video the more likes it gets the more likely i am to do a video on club head data and we can get into a bit more depth with that kind of stuff and get a bit more geeky as well so i look forward to that we can look at such things as swing path angle of attack launch angles all that cool geeky stuff so let me know so yeah that was pretty much it for me today that was hopefully a more simplified look when it comes to golf ball data if you've enjoyed this video as ever smash that like button subscribe if you've not done so already till next time thanks for watching cheers